I have no idea about this video, how I'm going to start it. Well, here we are. I've just started it, but my mind is racing. This is something I should have done months ago. However, you know how it is when you have to rip off a band-aid with an orchid that you see going downhill. If I didn't have my channel, I would have done this probably two months ago. But for the sake of transparency, I am going to do this on a video. And oh my goodness, I would appreciate a lot of likes on this video, even though it is not a good one. But my self-esteem is at its lowest because what you're looking at is Vanda Denisoniana. I still have hope for Leopard Yawn. Vanda Denisoniana, as far as I'm concerned, is dead. Now, as hard as this may sound, in my head, I just want to bin it. I want to be done with it. If this was spring, we wouldn't be talking like this. I would try to save something. However, because I love this orchid so much, I'm going to see what I'm up against once I get her down and cut things off, including the keiki. But for the last two months, I've been peeling leaves off the stem, one after the other, going yellow. The whole orchid is dehydrated. It makes no sense to me to save this orchid. And I also need the lava rock in that basket. On top of that, you can see how the basket is slanting. Well, at least I hope you can. That means that the hanger in there has rusted and is just holding on by a thread with the other hanger. The whole thing is one big mess. The orchid, just the whole, whole thing. And so is my head. That is why I'm not entirely sure how this video is going to go. I may have dead air because I'm thinking, I'm mulling things over in my head as I see them. Yeah, if you're going to stick around and watch this, thank you very, very much. Self-esteem, please like the video or dislike it for what you're going to see. I have no idea. We're going to find out together. First things first though is I'm going to be cutting off the plastic bag. I believe the roots in there are dead. I believe, well, never mind. Let's just get on with it. I believe everything in there is dead. I've taken so many deep breaths. I feel as though I'm gonna hyperventilate. Okay, you can see very dry sphagnum moss here, right? That was because I was gonna do what Fernanda Nathimento orchids and succulents does and put sphagnum moss around the stem to promote some root growth. That was six weeks ago. I didn't get around to it because life, but life is not to blame for what's going on here. I am to blame, and this vanda has been in the spotlight quite a few times because of my mistakes. This is probably the biggest result of a toxic copper overdose and she seemed to be doing quite well for a time being she even bloomed this spring but uh, at the end of the day i think she has succumbed to the elements of everything that she had had to deal with mainly copper i'm gonna get my sprayer because as we're gonna be cutting into this vanda, I want to see if there's anything I can salvage and then I'm gonna to have to think about how I'm gonna go about it. Also, because winter is coming and I don't need this during the winter. Oh, anyway, I'll be right back. I have been foliar feeding the vandas like this all summer long. The garbage bags were the humidity hack that worked really, really well. For the longest time, and since well, end of August, beginning of September, that's when all this started. The rapid leaf loss dropping, and then you could already see that she wasn't hydrating herself. I don't have the space or the environment to give her the highest humidity so that she would stop losing water through the leaves. I was misting continuously. The stem is still green. And I know I can probably make an attempt at saving her and I'm, I'm babbling because I've got all these options going through my head, especially the time of year going through my head. Uh, I don't know. And, and that's why I was delaying to do this because quite honestly, this is something I want to do quietly, feel sorry for myself, you know, move on and uh, explain things later. But. That wouldn't be fair considering how many videos I have done of this orchid and what I was up against. But we can see some root nubbins, some bulges. 
That was my hope in peeling off all the leaves as they were starting to desiccate to see if I could expose any form of new root growth. You see, there's a bulge there. I don't know if you can see it. Oh, you guys. Let's see what these roots down here pose. Besides, all the roots right at the base, they still have some flex in them, but they're not functioning. They're not functioning. The velamen is completely busted. Some are totally dead. Let's see. No, they're not totally dead, but they are not functioning. I completely messed up. I've got other words, but huh, let's just be PC here. I completely messed up with the copper. And honestly, I thought we had already, you know, sort of, we were winning. I thought we were winning at the beginning of this season, considering she had a spring to deal with that was horrendous. It was a nightmare. She dealt with all of that. Then she bloomed and I didn't consider it a stress bloom because she did it with such beautiful foliage. And even the cakey was looking amazing. And look at it now. Look at this cakey. It was growing so well even the keiki started desiccating because I kept an eye on the keiki all this time. I just thought, just watch the keiki, watch the keiki. Also foliar spraying the keiki, making sure it got enough calcium and magnesium, lots of seaweed during the season. You can see the remnants in the leaf joints of the seaweed. Begging for it to show me a root nubbin. Because if I had seen a root nubbin that was going to be viable, I would have taken that keiki off in a heartbeat. Oh, okay, next step. Let's cut into the stem down here. Is she off the support? Nope. I still have to do another one up here. So yeah, I've been really back and forth. Get on with it. Don't film it. Just do it. Explain later. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if that was the right thing to do or if this is the right thing to do. I am totally, my mind is racing. I'm trying to get a grip here. Okay. So the orchid is separated. We'll take away some of these roots down here. They look viable, but oh, they're not. They're not, I can feel them. They're not viable at all. Let's just cut her out of the basket. There we go. And then I can work on that because I do need that lava rock. It's all large lava rock. I need that. Let's keep the tag. Let's think positively. The stem doesn't look too shabby. Sorry for always jiggling there. Like I told you, this is, this is a mess, including my head. On the one hand, I'm really glad I'm doing this now though. Finally. At the end of the day, what convinced me was to, you know, just hit record. If somebody wants to watch the process, then fabulous. But as I said, I'm begging everybody just like the video or dislike it or do whatever. I need some self-esteem here. But um, at least I'm getting something done. I, I, procrastination sometimes is the worst enemy in the orchid hobby. And yet sometimes when you procrastinate, something happens and there's a turnaround and then you think, oh, whoa, lucky that I didn't get into it sooner because otherwise, you know, I would have missed X, Y, Z. But yeah. Now, if I wanted to save this one, see what the, the layman looks like. It's just woody and oh, just can't hydrate. The amount of water I was throwing at these vandas during the summer, especially with the seaweed and the CalMag, oh, exponential. But how am I going to save something like this? I don't have humidity. I've got cold temperatures coming. I can't provide the light. 
that they're going to need to make it shocking and in my head I was like just bin it Nina just bin it however I'm also a kind of a decision making process kind of person who thinks can you live with yourself come spring if you didn't try and in this situation because I've been doing this for so many years now with the my vandas that, that have died over the course of the years after the copper treatment I'm almost at the end of my rope to say, yeah, I can live with my decision if I don't save her and I'll have to live with the regret. Oh, the dead air. I told you dead air in this video. <sighs> I've got the tools. I won't have the temperatures. So here's my next thought is the cakey is smaller and I have, I could possibly find space, but again, I don't have the light. We're gonna give it a go. Okay, uh, let me regroup here, people. I, I need to regroup because I was full on intent at saying, nah, she's gonna go, I've made up my mind, I'm over it, I'm done. But seeing what I'm seeing now, I'm gonna regroup and I'll be back, uh, we'll give it a go. Okay, I've wet my sphagnum moss again for probably the 15th time. <laughs> no, I'm just exaggerating and we're going to leave the stem as long as possible but we will remove the keiki that stem is dead there's no life in that stem at all okay we remove the keiki we have a semblance ugh, of a root it's not even and we're going to wrap some sphagnum moss around it just around the base and see what happens. <sighs> I cannot tell you guys. See that? I cannot tell you whether I'm going to regret this or what. By the way, I'm going to put it out there. If at any moment in time I feel during the winter that this is too much, it's occupying space another orchid needs, um yeah i'm gonna give myself the executive liberty to just bin the pieces because at the end of the day recovering a denisoniana like this it took me two years to get her to bloom now without any of the facilities that she would need heat light mm -mm -mm -mm. i do not have high hopes at all. Huh. Okay. I may need this stem for some kind of, you know, where I can fix it against something at some point. So I'm leaving that a little bit longer. All right. First of all, let's get this off. Let's check the stem. The stem is as dead as doornails. It's just wood. What if I cut up a little higher? The roots are goners anyway. It's green up here though. See, that could be a root nubbin. Okay, at the point where it's green, I'm going to start with sphagnum moss. just got this mask and I'm gonna put them in with the stem in water permanently like I did with my other vanda that is now doing pretty well in orchid top I'm just cutting back the roots to fit seeing as it's really not here nor there that they're there but maybe for stability in the pot it can provide a little bit of support for stability and that's about it 
Ooh, gosh, you guys, my mind, my heart, my gut, everything is just on overdrive while doing this. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, like that. Oh, I don't know. I know that the popular vote will be, I am so glad you're at least giving it a go, etc., etc. My mind, however, my head is telling me what is the point knowing what I'm up against. But having gone into it and having finally done it, I'm like, I just cannot. I cannot go through with plan A and just bin her. It's almost like I have to see the ultimate, you know, the, the total loss as in gone. <laughs> like we're in the stage of the second going and I need to see maybe the last stage of, the, of going to make it going, going, gone. I babble, I don't know what to tell you except that I'm trying to be transparent here. And if you have any questions about the history of this orchid, I have so many videos about copper toxicity that it's all in those videos. Right now, I almost like just want to, um, yeah, get on with cleaning out the basket, clean out that lava rock and look forward to an orchid that is doing well. <sighs> and to finish off, I'm gonna show you a little surprise. Maybe it doesn't make up for what's going on here, but <laughs> <laughs> Check out how we are a lava burst. Three years, three whole years of putting her on a scrubby pad mount, having two pathetic little bulbs, not knowing what she's going to do. And look at Madam, she's going to bloom. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you about this hobby. I really don't. But again, a like, a dislike, comment, whatever. Everything is appreciated. My self-esteem right now is rock bottom. So let's look at how we are a lava burst again. <laughs> Whew. If you made it to the end, I so appreciate your time. Thank you for watching. Don't know if I want to ask you to keep your fingers crossed for the Denisoniana or just Na Nina Bennett. I don't know what to tell you. I don't, I, I am so torn between my options here, but okay. Let's give this a go for whatever it's worth. <laughs> Have yourself a beautiful day on one condition, please, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.